So um, you got some feedback on integer set. I will accept some of the responsibility. I realized I didn't say specifically I want to be able to interactively enter the integer set class. So some of you get to do it, a resubmit um, appeasing me on that. So. Um, Some of you need to fix up some <coughs> algorithms that didn't compute the right answers. So. But otherwise, it's most part pretty good. Um, overload is happening and now, and the next one is the shapes hierarchy. Um, and so this is an exercise in setting up a class hierarchy um, and the shapes involved are uh, the quadrilateral family okay so uh, specifically the quadrilateral in general uh, the next specific quadrilateral is a trapezoid okay. so the quadrilateral is thought to be any four points constitutes a quadrilateral right? Trapezoid is any four points, but there are two parallel lines. Okay, so we get a little more restrictive. So as we work down the hierarchy, we become more restrictive. And interestingly, we can add more information. Okay, more interesting information. Um, so as I said, I like this example because it really portrays some some uh, good principles about class design, class hierarchy design, um, constructor design, and so on. Uh, so is that, okay, continuing. Um, the trapezoid, as I said, is four points and two parallel lines, right, is, is the definition of a, of a trapezoid. A parallelogram is four points and two parallel lines, right? A rectangle then is, of course, a parallelogram, except now you have right angles. And the square is also four points, but they are specifically uh, arranged very, very carefully uh, with uh, one side, one one size for all four sides. Everything's parallel. We are not considering the rhombus, okay, which would be the um, parallelogram with all equal sides. So we can, you can put it in if you want, but I'm not considering it. So we're, I'm just working uh, our way down uh, the specific um, list of, of, of quadrilaterals that go straight down. Um, the rhombus is kind of a, a detour. Um, we just, you can fit it in if you want, but uh, not, not called for. All right. So um, this project in involves then six classes, a point class, a very trivial point class, a quadrilateral class, okay, of which we'll use four points, instantiate four points in the quadrilateral. We will have a trapezoid class, which will be a subclass of the quadrilateral. Okay. All trapezoids are quadrilaterals. The converse is not true, which is guiding us in how we would design the hierarchy. Right. So a subclass, objects of any subclass, and we're talking object-oriented, any objects of a subclass are Elements are objects of its superclass, right? All trapezoids are quadrilaterals. The converse is not true. Continuing, the parallelogram is a trapezoid. All parallelograms are trapezoids. And reminding everybody of their geometry. Okay. The converse is not true. Not all trapezoids are parallelograms. Okay. The rectangle is a subclass of the parallelogram. All rectangles are parallelograms, which are trapezoids. 
which are quadrilaterals. We come all the way up to three. A square, all squares are rectangles, which is also a parallelogram, which is also a trapezoid, which is also a quadrilateral. A very nice, clean set of shape hierarchy. It's a nice hierarchy. Okay, it's perfect. Okay. So you have these five shapes and this uh, auxiliary class called point, all right, which will look a lot like, it, it, it really is the same template pattern as, as the rational number set. It's two integers as instance variables, all right? So your, your, your point class can be very simply um, class point, public class point, um, instance variables of um, x and y, in x, in y, all right, getters and setters, or, or set, whatever, right, get x, get y, make sense, print, probably, um, I don't think I described that. I may need to go back and add that to the uh, description a little bit more in terms of, of the point. Okay, point class contains the integer x, y coordinates and constructors x, get, get x, get y, and y is get. x, get, x, y, y, get. This is a right strange, strange, I'll change that. Get x, get y. Okay, all right, make them real getters. Uh, and a constructor, obviously, point, you know, int, int. So that would be the head, header file for the point. It is not part of the hierarchy. It's used by the hierarchy, but bear in mind, this is a class that is used by the hierarchy. It's not a subclass of or a superclass of. It's used. So. This is another neat example to kind of really understand when is a class a subclass versus a class being a superclass or a class that's just used. The point is just a class that's used. <coughs> so we create the point, so there's always this XY pairing. Uh, only in your driver will you input in two integers, but then at that point you should construct a point and from that stage on, you should, in your shapes, you refer to points. Shapes are made up of points. Not pairs of integers, right? They don't know anything about x and y, they just know that, it, that it's a point. Okay. Any questions on this class? Really simple. You don't, you know, it's, it's storage. It's retrieval, get x, get y, the ability to print a point, much like you print a rational, put it in parentheses, and the number, the two numbers, x and y, put a comma between them, put parentheses around it. That's what printing should do. No computation. We don't have to worry about distances between points. We don't care. All right? You could certainly enhance it to do all sorts of nifty things. No other, no other methods. That will be sufficient. The book, I think, even has the class. It's not like you've got to really invent it. I think it's in there. If not, it's not hard to invent. All right. So now, I'm going to work my way through the five shapes, or start it, get you started. I'll do uh, I'll do quadrilateral. I'll do. Uh, trapezoid, and you, you should get the idea of what's going on, and I'll work through abstractly the other, other shapes uh, to kind of get, the, get, the, get these ideas going. So uh, the class, so this is the, the top level class, class quad. Oh, um, let, me, let me back up and, and simplify all of this. All we are doing is creating a class to represent the shape. 
We don't have to draw the shape. We're not doing anything to the shape like resizing it or translating. If anyone's taken graphics, you take a shape and you translate it, you rotate it, you transform it, you do three-dimensional things with these shapes. We're not doing any of that. We're just simply going to keep track of the information about the shape, period. All right? So this is more about an exercise in designing the class hierarchy. So really trying to keep this simple. The quadrilateral will be made up of four points. I'm not even going to worry if they're collinear. All right. We'll, so we'll consider that's a quadrilateral. It's made up of four points even though they're collinear. It's hardly a two-dimensional shape, but you know, we're going to let it at that. So the quadrilateral is probably the uh, the one it's the one shape that we're not going to concern ourselves being maybe valid, right? Testing for collinearity is just not worth it. It's, you could, but uh, that's not part of it. However, trapezoids and parallelograms and, and rectangles and squares, I am going to kind of uh, hope and insist that you only create valid shapes. That's what we want to do. Okay? As, a, as a designer of a class, your constructor must be designed to, one, be able to construct any valid instance. I want to be able to construct any valid, ins any valid instance of a quadrilateral. Just four points. We're, not, we're just not going to eliminate the collinearity situation. I mean, I, I could have also, that, that, that's now going to be acceptable as a quadrilateral. We're just not going to worry about any any collinearity, right? But otherwise, otherwise than the collinearity, any four points is a quadrilateral, period, right? And if I want to represent any quadrilateral, I need to know what the xy coordinates of four points. Okay. For a trapezoid, that's not so true. We have to ensure that those points actually construct or represent two parallel lines. Okay. We're going to simplify it because, you know, that's a that's a trapezoid. But checking out parallelism of those two lines, I don't remember the geometry of that. Right. So we're going to simplify it so that. Other than the quadrilateral, these other four shapes will be parallel to the x-axis. Right? So we would never worry about this shape being represented. Okay? Instead, we would represent it as that shape. That's the same shape now, isn't it? It's just rotated. Again, if you take a dra graphics class, you worry about constructing the shape, you actually don't worry about the size because you can change the size. Right? You don't worry about actually where it is on the x-y axis because you can translate. And you don't worry about exactly its orientation because you can rotate. The graphics course takes care of that. I'm interested in being able to construct a valid trapezoid. I want to be able to. I want to be able to represent this shape. Okay. I will still be able to do that, even with the limitation in that I am making these two parallel lines parallel to the x-axis. All right, with me? Right. It's a simplification. It works well for us. It simplifies being able to represent the trapezoid. But we aren't going to worry about the infinite number of rotations that this could take on. Um, we're going to take care of the, basically the, the, the size right? and, and the position. So of the, of the three things that you can do to geometric shapes in graphics, translate, resize, make them bigger, make them smaller, and rotate, 
we can represent any size, we can represent any xy position, we just aren't going to worry about rotation. So we're eliminating the rotation piece of these shapes. For the quadrilateral, it's, you know, four points rotated if you want. All right, so that's the simplification. Trapezoids, parallelograms, rectangles, and squares will always be parallel to the x-axis. Where they are on the x, y, we can, we can handle that. Okay? With me on those simplifications, right? All right, so the class quadrilateral will have what instance variables? What did I say? What do I need to keep track of my quadrilateral? Four points. Yeah. Point P1, point P2, point P3, point P4. Don't give me eight integers. It's four points. Just like a rational, we talk about other rationals and buried underneath classes, of course. Yeah, the numerator and denominator, but we think in terms of the rational. So this, this is it. Um, methods that we'd want to be able to do, uh, of course, a uh, constructor, point, 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 I don't think you would actually have any other constructor, a default constructor. I don't know. What would you make a default quadrilateral? All zeros? Mm, probably not. That's, that's really a, a, a um, degenerate quadrilateral, I guess you can. We're not going to actually track for that. We're not going to look for collinearity, and I'm not going to worry too much about points that are actually equal. I suppose one could say that's a quadrilateral <laughs> in, our, in our world area of zero, right? Um, but anyways, there's our, there's our um, uh, constructor. And if you want, uh, we could have a get P1, get P2, get P3, get P4. We can get each point. Getter. A getter for the points. Uh, and probably a print, right? Yeah, please put a print. Print the four points. Actually, what should that do? Right? This, if, if we were actually implementing that, you would say uh, p1.print, right? We have a printer from the point class. Call the point class print. Print your point. Right? P1. Print, P2, print, etc., etc. Et right? That's it. That's the quadrilateral. I gave it to you. There's the header for the quadrilateral. Just implement. Uh, pretty, pretty easy to implement this getter. Uh, hopefully, you can handle the constructor. What's a constructor do? It, it assigns the, the points that you would pass in four points and then make sure that P1 through P4 get them. Yeah. What does that say about P1 print? Here? Yes. Print. This is the print method. Okay. Just going to read it. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm writing fast and it's awful. And uh, I know Dan's going to edit the film so that, that all my writing looks better. I'm going to find out how bad the writing is, and I'm going to have to overlay it with tight stuff. It's probably what I really need to do. All right. P ah, of course. P2 print. P3 print. P4 print. Yeah, that's the hardest. Uh, that was the hardest method of class. All right. All right. That, that's easy. That's the, that's the top level class. 
Okay. So the next class down is trapezoid. I don't like to spell things out. Quads fine for quadrilateral. Because most some of, some of you have spelling um, um, issues um, or liabilities or you know. Uh, so so quad fine trap. You know, don't try to spell trapezoid then. Parallelogram par is fine par. Is good. Rec, if you want to say for rectangle. SQ for square. You know, it can be very quite abbreviated. I, that, that's fine. Abbreviate rather than misspell. Okay. So class trap. Pardon me while I go look at syntax. I can't remember. I should do this before class. Just trying to make sure I get the, the the brace in the right place. That's what I'm looking at. All right, class trap extends class um, quadrilateral. Right? Put the word class there again. No. Right? So instead, Java puts the word extends. Here we use a, use a uh, colon. C++ is different from Java in that you may inherit from two or more classes. It's called multiple inheritance. C++ has multiple inheritance. It does not have interfaces. Right? So why does Java have interfaces? Because Java is single inheritance. And there are times that we actually want to inherit or implement things from other abstractions the interface. So Java has interfaces, C++ does not. C++ has multiple inheritance and that's that's the difference between the two as far as object oriented and inheritance hierarchies. Right? Which is better? Most people would argue that probably the Java approach with uh, single class inheritance and, and, and the interface is probably better design. Right? There are messy things and ambiguities that arise with the multiple inheritance, but Southstrip designed it this way and it's stuck ever since. All right. So now, with a quadrilateral, there was a whole lot more information other than the four points. But now that I got a parallel, you know, like a trapezoid, and it, you know, I don't care if it's an isosceles trapezoid or a, you know, an arbitrary trapezoid. I'm not gonna worry about that. Here's the isosceles trapezoid, right? Like isosceles triangle, equal sides. Good luck, right? Um, but we've got some interesting uh, information about trapezoids. A little more so than an arbitrary quadrilateral. It's, it looks like a diamond, but it's, it's, it's meant to be a little bit weird shaped. Right? Arbitrary quadrilateral. There's, the, you know, an arbitrary quadrilateral, the four points is about all we can say about it. But there's something interesting that we might be able to say in addition to our four points. Yes? Our trapezoid is made up of four points, but we have two parallel lines. What would I might want to say about the lines? What might I want to track about these lines? That two x values would be the same, or the two y values would be the same. Uh, the, the, uh, okay, that would, that, that would be one approach, okay? Yeah, there, there's alternatives to this design, okay? I'm gonna drive you towards another one. 
Okay? And we'll leverage that idea. Okay? What can we what what in information might I be able to want to track about some obvious characteristics about these trapezoids? Yeah, I got I got a length here, length one, length two. All right. Common to class inheritance, we can add information to the superclass. So we inherit. We are inheriting four points already. We do not need to redeclare these four points. P1, P2, P3, P4 exist in trap. I don't have to write them back. What I can do is add, uh, we'll just simplify it to everything's integer. Even lengths. All right, we'll just go simple integers. Points are integers on the xy axis and lengths are going to be integers. Really, yeah, I know. But you can switch it to double if you want. Uh, nothing's gained by Again, the exercise in the class hierarchy design. Okay, so int l1, int l2. I I use l because it's real simple and short, and I can write it script-wise. But they're awful. They're awful variables in a computer, right? Because l's look like one, so it looks like I have 11 and 12. All right. So len one, len two, if you would, please. But I'll just use L1, L2. Okay. So that is my, that's the new information. Now let's leverage that. I want to construct a trapezoid and only a trapezoid. If my constructor act, adds uh, or uh, permits an arbitrary four points, I would have to do a lot of geometry calculation to see whether, do I have parallel lines? All right, now we could leverage um, what Ryan suggested and, and make sure that the, the y's of, the, of two of the points are the same and y's of the other two points are the same. That's a lot of work. I don't want to have to go through a bunch of tests. Let's just limit the user to only be able to ever construct a trapezoid. Okay, here's the trick. If I supply two points and two lengths, that allows me to define any trapezoid and only a trapezoid. From the two points and the two lengths, I can calculate the other two points. Cool, huh? Okay, good principle. Allow the user to construct any valid instance of the object and only a valid instance of the object. And if you can do it in such a way where you don't have to test the daylights out of the information to verify that it's a valid instance, do it. That's what I'm doing here. Right? So my constructor for trap Okay. We'll take two points, point one, point P1, point P2, int length one, uh, let me, let me uh, uh, change these P's now to um, Q's. Length L1, or int uh, length 1, and int length 2. So my constructor says, give me two points and two lengths. So we can have any two points, any two lengths. We will calculate internally the other two points. Because the constructor of the subclass must call the constructor a constructor of the superclass. What's the superclass want? It wants four points. Right? Now let's give it four points. It's in the shape of a trapezoid. So you calculate. So again, the syntax is 
the um, parameters of the constructor, and then a colon. Now, what, what do we what, what do we do in Java? Let's just back up. Let's kind of remind us what happens in Java. How do I call the parent superclass constructor in the subclasses constructor? But somebody said it. Super. Remember super? Oh yeah. And you didn't know what it was. That was the call to the super classes constructor. Right? You should do it. Right? So you want to do that here. C++ puts a colon there. Sorry, I'm running out of space. And so we want to call the quad. We're calling this guy. Point P1. I didn't, I didn't put parameters here. Uh, I didn't. I didn't fill that in, obviously. But but uh, it, it, this requires four points. I've got two of them, right? Pass Q1 and Q2 in. Go ahead. You're done. Now we need to calculate Q3 and Q4. Okay. So I'm sorry. P, P3, P4. Right. So this, the, the third parameter needs to be what kind of data? It needs to be a point. Let's call the point constructor. I'm running out of space here, sorry about that. Call the point constructor. So my third point, all right, now let's do the math. So I have Q1 here, Q2 here, and I have length 1 and length 2. Boy, I switched it around. Let's, let's, Let's stay sane here. Let's make this Q1 and this Q2. All right. And I want to calculate Q3. What, what, what would be Q's three coordinates? Just to say it in English. What's Q3's coordinates? Come on, Ryan, you're with me here. You're, you're with me. What would be Q's three, Q3's coordinates? What would they be? The point plus the line. Okay. So points are made up of X and Y, so we're going to have to get X and get Y. Aren't we? Okay. So Q3's, Q3's X is what? X plus L1. Who's X? Q1. Q1's X. Get X. And do what? Add L1. Add L or len 1. Right. Sorry, I'm out, out of room here. There's a lot of vertical stuff. Right. So the third point is, this is the, I calculated the third point's x. What is its y? L or Q1. It's Q1's y. So one dot get y. See, we needed them, didn't we? Right. So that's the third point, comma, uh, and then the four. I'll put this out here. Point. Right. So Q four is what? Q two get x plus len 2 <coughs> q2 dot get y. Wow. All our work is in the constructor's header definition. That's just the header definition. Now the, now, now the parentheses goes here, or the brace goes here. And what you would want to do is L1 equals len 1, and L2 gets len 2. We need to, right? We, we, we now have our four points plus the two lengths. Does that make sense? I'm sorry for the vertical, but it fits on the, the video screen. He doesn't have the pan. OK. 
Okay? What? Who's confused? Anybody confused? Make sense? You can you can read that okay? Get it? Okay. So Q Q1 and Q2 get passed straight through. Okay. And then the third point is Q1. Q1's x plus the length and Q1's y will be Q3's y. And for Q4, its x is Q2's x plus the length and and then tap Q2's y. Which is what Ryan said is that the y's are on the same value. In fact, there we go. I'm passing the y's straight through. Guaranteed it's a trapezoid. And I can construct any trapezoid. You know, this one, this one, because it's, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is that's a trapezoid too. We'll start out with these two points. There are other ways to do this. Yeah, I'm sure. Right. It's an interesting thing. As I, I, I just love this example. Right. Uh, as we get to have more specific shapes, we add additional information. We start out with a quadrilateral with basically eight numbers representing our four points. Our trapezoid has those eight numbers plus a length, two lengths. Okay. Um, but how much information do we need to pass into a trapezoid? It kind of goes, it goes another direction. I'm only having to supply six numbers. Right? Four numbers for the two points and two lengths. The quadrilateral required actually more information, and yet we actually store less. That was just kind of cool. All right? I'm not going to write as much code, but I'm going to go through reminding you of these shapes. Let's, get, let's go through the next process. So the next shape is what? Parallelogram, R, class. Oh, I should change colors. Black. Class par extends quad? No. Trap. Don't go back to the top. All parallelograms are trapezoids. Go immediately to that class. And of course, trap extends quadrilateral. What did we inherit? We've inherited all four points and two lengths. How many lengths do I need? The difference between a parallelogram and a trapezoid is what? The two parallel lines are now equal. So I will, I will conjecture that we can construct any parallelogram with two points and one length. You actually supply lesser information as we go down. Again, the reason doing so is you can't let the user create anything but a parallelogram with that information. Two points and one length. Right? In this situation. If I give these two points, which basically determines the angle, and yeah, the, and the length, but what's the length of this of this leaning line here? Oh, we've got to do. Isn't that ugly? You know, what what is that? There's there's it's triangles and, and Pythagorean's theorem, and you know, I don't want to do square roots. Okay. I don't want to do square roots. So supply two points and one length. Okay. For a trapezoid, we supply two points and two lengths. For a parallelogram, two points and one length. 
So do we need an additional variable, instance variable? No. Right. What's the constructor look like? Par will receive point Q1, point Q2, and length. So what what uh, what's the super constructor? Who's the super constructor? Trap. What does trap want? Yeah. It, the only difference is it, it takes the two points and but it needs two lengths. Gee, what are we gonna do there? Put a zero in? What is this? This is a trapezoid. What's this length? L. What's this length? L. Get it? Well, this one's really easy. I'll give it to you. Q1, Q2, L, len, len, done. We didn't have to do any calculation. Isn't that cool? Five numbers. Four, four numbers for the two points and one length. Again, there's, there are alternate approaches to this, but you know, this is a good one to see to see the pattern emerge. You, you, you could you could decide to calculate these lengths based on points. I don't know, but I, I, I just find that this this uh, this pattern to be um, elegant, aesthetically pleasing. Rectangle. Superclass is R. All right. So now we should change colors. All right. So following this pattern, we'd be really nice to. Again, reduce the amount of information that the user needs to supply to construct an arbitrary rectangle. What would that be? One point, one length. A point, a length, and a height. Supply one point, one length, and one height from which you can calculate the second point. Right? In the same way we did the calculations of these points. Again, with a point and a length and a height, can you construct anything but a rectangle? No, because you're going to calculate the correct points. Don't ask the user to supply the points, one point, and calculate the others. Essentially, and it'll cascade all the way through this hierarchy. The work is being done for you. All I want in the driver, this is all I want in your driver. Ask me what shape I want to create and then print the four points. Proof that it works. That's all you've got to do. Okay. My favorite test is to put in, I want a square, and I'll put in a point and a length, and I better get the other correctly calculated four points. And if your program works, it'll ca cascade all the way up. You don't have to do any work. All the work is in, right, this kind of stuff. This was actually the hardest one. Right? So I'm going to let that code there. For the square, right, square is a rectangle. What would you supply? What, what would you supply square? A point and a length. Of course, a rectangle wants two lengths. Well, what do you do there? Same thing that we just did with the parallelogram and trapezoid, right? Fun. Okay. Great principles here that you should hardwire into your brain for construction 
any constructor. Take this back to Java. This isn't just C++. The constructor should not permit any creation of an instance that's not valid. And you should keep the information that must be provided to a minimum. Okay? And, and I think this is an example that demonstrates that in a very sterile way, but um, you know, it, it, it's a great example of how class hierarchies can work. Granted, in real serious programming, things aren't as pretty as this and simple as this, but those principles really need to apply. That that a constructor needs to and fills in all the all the the uh, instance instance variables. All right. Um, I would also suggest uh, that each of them provide its own print. But you can you can print you can call the, the superclasses print to be part of that um, and decide for a square. Of course, you only need to print out one of the lengths. Right. Uh, again, you don't have to declare. Uh, well, well, here in in the in the rectangle, you would have to add maybe the height. Right. These lengths here that's coming down from trapezoid are the lengths of the two sides, the parallel sides. The height here is um, is 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 new uh, in the rectangle. Yeah, I know in parallelograms we often talk about a height, and you could actually probably do that. You could have you could have provided uh, the the um, the height, but actually the height is actually calculated as the difference of the two y's. So it's it's possible that the height of the parallelogram could be calculated, but uh, in order to allow for any arbitrary angle here, you need to supply the two points. Are my principles clear? I'm not sure how well they're um, stated. I don't know if they even are stated. But those are guiding principles for me. What should be in a constructor? Right? Make sure all the instance variables get set. Make sure that you ask the user for no more than absolutely necessary to construct a valid instance. And that all valid instances can somehow be constructed very simple principles and they've got something good. Questions? All right. Yeah? I don't think so. I looked at that and I realized that this is radically different than anything. It's the, the, the book says very little about how to do this. I've done a lot of simplifications. Um, so yeah, I know I say to be updated, I'll scratch that. So yeah, I looked at that and decided, no, I'm not changing it. I don't think these solutions are out there as, a, as part of the solution manual. All right. Okay.